97, 98, it, essentially it's kind of your first full season, right? You were start to yep. finish NHL, you and Grant Fuhr, who you loved as a kid. How crazy. Yes, very crazy to the point where I, I have this picture here. When I was 12 years old, I won the Dairy Queen shootout. Ha. And I got, I got my picture with Fierzy. That was the first playoff game that year Andy Moog had played that time. So Fierzy comes out. I get this picture with them. You know, they end up, he signs it. They, they sent it to me in the mail or whatever. That was when I was 12. Fast forward, I'm 26, 14 years later. Fierzy's my goalie partner. And it was, you know, it was, it was surreal. The guy's a living legend, literally. And, you know, he had come off, I think the year prior, Keenan had kind of, he was a reclamation project. Keenan started in like 79 games. And they had a guy named uh, Bruce Racine back him up. And then it was John Casey when I was mm -hmm. in the hospital there. And then, you know, Fierzy's back there. And it was, it was awesome. And, you know, to this day, I, we're friends, but I also kind of still in awe because he's like a legend. So it's weird. You know, you're like, okay, that guy's a living legend, but it's like I could text him and he would text me back, which is weird, but it's, it was awesome. It was so cool to play with him. And Chris Pronger and I would sit at the back of the plane and Fierzy would sit behind us and we'd get, you know, long road trips. You get him telling stories about winning the cups in the eighties. Those there's a reason why the cup has a chaperone. I think it's because of those guys in, in the 80s there, those 80s Oilers, put it that way. You always hear that saying, don't meet your heroes. You don't want to meet your heroes. That this was your hero and that you were that close to him. There's plenty of opportunity for you to have the shine kind of come off, but that it didn't is pretty, it, it's pretty amazing. That's kind of a testament to what kind of a guy he is, that you still kind of have that, like you say, that aura uh, around yeah. him is pretty cool. It, and, and, you know, he's been transparent with his struggles in life. Uh, I ended up working with his, uh, you know, mental coach, uh, Maxie, you know, to, and, and, you know, Maxie was a big part of, of Grant's life. He was a big part of my life for a while there. Um, you know, you, you look at it, and I'll tell you one quick story about Fierzy, and this is Fierzy in a nutshell. Like, I used to be, we talked about a high-anxiety guy, high-energy guy. But when I was backing up, I was wanted to be vocal. I wanted to bring something to the dress room. So we're with St. Louis. Fierzy starting. We're playing Arizona or Phoenix Coyotes in the playoffs that year. And we should beat them. We're the better team. But Phoenix, they've, they've given it to us. Like Ronick, I think, had a broken jaw, but he came back and was inspiring them. They had, they had a good team. The Happy Bullen was a really good goalie. They had a really good team, but I thought ours was better. We end up going to seven games. Okay, so we're playing a seventh game. And I remember going in there and Fierzy, who is non-vocal, nothing. So I used to sit with popcorn uh, in the trainer's room and just have a little popcorn. I'm stretching before the game and that. And Fierzy walks in and just looks at me. Hey, he used to call me Chum. Hey, Chum, you know, hey, Chum. And, and he reaches over and he grabs some popcorn and he's just like, like it's like we're just hanging out. And I'm like, okay, we got a game seven in an hour. And he's just had a couple, you know, a couple pieces of popcorn. And then before the game, you could just the tension in the room. It just it, you could feel how tight it was. And he stands up, and it was just he never said a word to anybody. Always the whole year, he never said anything. And he goes, guys, just get me one tonight. All I need is one. And we're all like, what? Like, what did he just say? Like, all I need is one goal, guys. I'm, I'm good. So we're like, holy smokes. We won one nothing that night. He put a clinic on, but it was like, I remember Pierre Turgeon, I think, scored. And it was like those, it's one of these, like, I'm getting goosebumps talking about it. It's just like this, one of these moments where it's like, that's a legend. That's, that's a guy calling a shot, but not lip service, because the guy never said anything all year. But he stands up when we needed it and goes, just give me one. I just need one tonight, guys. And it was a hard fought battle. Like we, we fought them hard and they were, like I say, Phoenix was a really good team. And, and fears got a shutout that night. Like that's like, that's the stuff of like legends, but like backing it up legends too. Like not just like, Hey, lip service and, you know, embellishing a story that like he just, I witnessed it live from 10 feet away. Yeah. It was crazy. It was awesome.
Hey guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out more of our content right here on the Flames Nation YouTube page. We had a bunch of great long form interviews. You can check out some videos we've done as well outside of the studio. And of course, if you want more writing or merchandise stuff, flamesnation.ca or nationgear.ca. Appreciate you watching.